It's time to set our lineups for week five. Let's get into the ultimate rankings. Drop a like and subscribe if you enjoy the ultimate rankings format. But let's start with running backs here and let's start in the S tier. Obviously, you got Saquon on a bye this week. You got the Lions running backs on buys this week. And so it's going to be a little bit different here. In the S tier, we're going to have Derrick Henry and Kyron Williams. Derrick Henry coming off back-to-back 30-point games has looked really freaking good. He looks like, hmm, a unicorn. So you, you can't rank him anywhere else. And against the Cincinnati Bengals team that has been average against running backs, also you got the Vegas line for that at 46.5. And, and then Kyron Williams in a shootout with the Packers at 48.5 for the Vegas line. Uh, Packers, again, middle of the road against running backs. But both of these guys are going to be S tier probably rest of the season until they prove to us that they shouldn't be both of these guys have looked really good to start the season so yeah and in, in the a tier here we're going to have jordan mason up top he's coming off of a 23 point game against new england last week and you're like okay well that's fluky it was against a really really you know easy matchup new england being one of the worst teams in the league well they're playing arizona this week and arizona while they've been competitive in a lot of games just got blown out by Jaden daniels and the washington commanders who seem to be a lot better than i initially expected and um arizona has you know a pretty average at best maybe even below average defense, right? They they have a lot of uh, lacking talent. So Jordan Mason, I think he's going to have another good week. Alvin Kamara, we do have in the A tier. Generally, he would be in the S tier. But you've seen week after week after week now, Kansas City has been able to stuff these runners and not really allow a lot of um, a, a lot of production at all. And with Alvin Kamara, even though I think he'll be able to transcend, I don't think it'll be S tier level production. He's still going to be in the A tier though. You're, you're, you're starting him every single week. Guys like Brees and Bijan, who we usually like to have in the S tier as well, um, both coming off of really rough games. Bijan, honestly, is just not producing to the level that we've been expecting. He's going to be around this range every single week until he can prove that he's you know, deserving of being higher because at this point, we've just been assuming that he's going to get to that point. He needs to actually get to that point of production. All right, a number of guys here in the B tier. Let's highlight just a couple here. Number one's going to be James Cook playing the Texans this week. Vegas line set at 48. The Texans have been decent against running backs this year, but James Cook has continued to get usage. I don't know why they didn't use him more last game. We're going to expect a bounce back for him. You got Joe Mixon in this tier uh, against the Bills. You know, Connor, guys like Jonathan Taylor and Aaron Jones in this tier as well. Um, all of these Vegas lines, with the exception of Aaron Jones going up against the New York Jets, um, all these Vegas lines are 47 or higher. So we like this tier because, again, the, all these guys project to be in high-scoring games. Aaron Jones does have a tough matchup against the New York Jets this week, uh, a team that's allowed the seventh fewest fantasy points to running backs so far this year. Uh, and a defense that's just really good. But Aaron Jones is still getting every valuable touch in that offense, so we're going to continue to rank him here uh, until he proves to us that he shouldn't be ranked this high. Yeah, JT might be hindered a little bit from his injury this week as well, so just keep that in mind. Obviously, you're starting him if he does play. If not, Trey Sermon might actually be a viable flex option. We'll see, because Jacksonville's defense hasn't been able to stop anything. C tier, we're going to have Josh Jacobs at the top. Uh, Josh Jacobs has kind of been falling down our rankings a bit, and uh, even with Jordan Love being back in week four, he didn't really do a ton. He had another like <laughs> 10 point game. He can't get a touchdown, dude. Like we need him to get a touchdown. Honestly, this is very reminiscent to me of Joe Mixon in 2023, where he could not do anything for the first month of the season. Couldn't get a touchdown, but he was getting all the volume, all the opportunity, all of the receptions. And um, then he finally, you know, ended up producing the second half of the season. I'm hoping that this can come sooner for Josh Jacobs. I'm getting a little bit impatient, getting kind of annoyed. But again, he's the only guy in that backfield. The only guy. The, produ the production is going to come at some point. Travis Etienne, if he plays, is going to be in this tier. He's coming off the shoulder injury. Tank Bigsby is kind of taking away from him um, in, in the volume game. But... Uh, they are playing the Indianapolis Colts defense, and that is going to be a plus for him. And then Najee Harris moving up the boards a little bit as well because he's the last man standing. Cordero Patterson, ankle injury. Jalen Warren has been out multiple weeks now with an injury as well. His status is questionable, even though he will be in our rankings this week in case he does play. Najee Harris is still the number one guy, and as long as he's getting usage in the red zone, he has the upside to be a, a C-tier level running back, in my opinion. Right next to Chuba Hubbard, who is coming off off of two straight weeks of 20 plus point games. I, I think until he shows that he's not going to do that, we've got to rank him here. Yeah, let's go to the D's tier here now. We're going to start with Zach Moss at the top. Um, you're going to have a couple of guys in this tier that have tough matchups. Zach Moss against the Ravens, Devin Singletary against the Seahawks, and then Rico Dowdle against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And so these guys are going to be in a little bit tougher situations. That's why they're kind of here. Zach Moss obviously has running back one upside like you saw last week. He had 20 points. Uh, Devin Singletary as well. He does have some significant upside, but being ranked here uh, at position number 21, just again, because he's playing the Seahawks. Seahawks have been really good. They've allowed the second least amount of points to running backs in fantasy football this year. Uh, so we'll put him here as well. We got Rashad White down here and we've got Buck Irving in the same tier because look, they're pretty much splitting 50-50 right now. 
I don't feel really good about starting either of them. Odds are one of them is going to get a touchdown, and it's basically up to you to decide which one. And so these guys are in the same tier because we value them pretty equivalently. They're against the Atlanta Falcons defense. That's been decent this year uh, against the run. And then we've got DeAndre Swift, who moves up this week because he had a really good game last week, but because he plays the Panthers, who have given up the second most points to running backs this year so far in fantasy football. And so uh, wow. definitely still cautious about starting Swifty, but he finds himself in this tier with all these guys this week because the, the matchup is still pretty good for him. Yeah, the F tier is going to be a bunch of very viable RB2 options that have managed to be productive behind you know pretty good running backs like Charbonnet and Braylon Allen. Uh, Justice Hill just dropped a 16-point game with Derrick Henry, dropping like 25 to 30, depending on what format you're in. Uh, Chase Brown, even, who I still believe is a running back, too, in the Cincinnati Bengals offense. He had a great game, even outproduced Zach Moss. Um, in week four, I am going to pump the brakes a little bit with the Chase Brown hype just this week because they are going against the Ravens defense. That's going to be a tougher matchup. I don't think you're going to see both of those guys be super productive. Um, it's probably going to be one or the other. Probably give the benefit of the doubt to Zach Moss, who is going to get a majority of the work in the red zone and, and with goal line carries. Um, but Javante Williams, kind of the remaining running back one option, right? Maybe Kareem Hunt as well, who I guess you could consider the running back one. Uh, Samaj P. Ryan is going to eat into that workload. Carson Steele fumbled last week. He didn't see the field again. So maybe they try to start him fresh in a new matchup in week five. I don't really know. Kareem Hunt, we're going to give the benefit of the doubt to the nod as the top option for Kansas City. But uh, they're going to have to find new, more innovative ways to win because that running back, uh, that, that backfield isn't looking too good right now. Yeah, let's go to the G tier now. We'll start with Gibby at the top of this tier. Uh, again, you're basically just hoping he has some receiving upside into the 30s now. These are barely flexible guys. Jalen Warren is here. Um, honestly, this is because we think Cordell Patterson may not play this week. Yeah. If Cordell Patterson is healthy, he's going to be up here instead of Jalen Warren. Probably maybe even it's your higher. It looks like Cordell was getting a pretty significant amount of snaps when we were watching the Colts game there. Yeah, Artie uh, Smith loves him. He loves him. He can't He can't get away from him. So uh, we would move Cordell off here if Cordell yeah, plays. Yeah, he was Warren. declared out pretty quickly in that game, though, yeah. so I don't expect him to be back this week. Uh, Eckler's going to be here as well. We're, we are expecting Eckler to make a return this week if he doesn't. Um, I don't think you really elevate Jeremy McNichols that much. We're not really sold on like the whole, you know, yeah, he had 20 points, but like, you know, I, I B-Rob we're, got 20 carries to McNichols like five or six. Yeah, again, he just so. got, he had two touchdowns. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Samaj P. Ryan, you are going to have here as well. Ty Chandler has a tough matchup against the Jets, so you're not starting him if you can help it. Uh, same thing with Alexander Madison going up against the Broncos. Pretty low uh, Vegas line for that game. So, all these guys are guys, again, if you can help it, you're not flexing them, but um, they are emergency options if you need it with the bye weeks. Yeah, and all these guys in the H tier are going to be um, band-aids, basically one-week band-aids where if you have to play them because of bye weeks, then you can and hope that they can get something going, maybe. Uh, it's Ray Davis, McLaughlin, Elliott, Algier. You got guys like Roshan, Roshan who had the lone goal line carry for Chicago in week four. Um, and then Miles Sanders, who even got some usage with Chuba putting up 20 points. So um, every single one of these guys, again, you're not usually going to see them in our rankings, but uh, they're just being pushed up our boards because of the bye week. Now, let's jump over to the wide receiver rankings here. Here's a full set of wide receiver rankings. I'm going to highlight the S tier. Jamar Chase, CD Lamb, Justin Jefferson, and Malik Neighbors, all four guys that you're feeling really good about to start the season. Obviously, Jamar had a little bit of a slower start, but he's had big touchdowns in the last couple of games, and so he is the wide receiver eight on the season. Justin Jefferson continues to produce. He does have a tough matchup this week, but it's Justin Jefferson. He's the wide receiver three so far on the season, and, and again, even though he's going to have sauce on him, we still expect him to be productive this week. Malik Neighbors, as a rookie, has been sensational. He is the wide receiver one and the sixth overall ranked fantasy player in terms of production so he's going to be in the s tier until he's either slows down or something happens because otherwise he's not going to be moved out of here and then cd lamb cd's been a little bit slower however you have seen a little bit of bounce back in the last couple games he's a wide receiver 10 right now we expect that to go up all four of these guys are going to be locked in for the rest of the season pretty much yeah and top of the a tier is going to be nico collins um expect him to be in the s tier for you know, a lot of matchups this week is just a tough matchup against Buffalo and they have, they have a good defense have been able to keep a lot of productive offenses from being ultra um, explosive and Nico Collins, again, starting him every single week. He has the upside to score 25 points again, maybe just bet on like the low end of, of like, 18 to 20 points this week, right? A to a tier level talent against the Buffalo Bills is a tough matchup. You got guys like Marv and Debo Samuel. Debo, I, even though he had a rough uh, production week, it looked bad on paper against New England. 
They didn't really have to utilize him that much. He was already like he was doubtful going into week four. And then he was a surprise start, a surprise active. And he actually, you know, got the ball and was effective and, and had a couple of explosive plays. Again, they just didn't have to run him into the ground or really utilize him in the passing game as much as, you know, they will in future weeks because that game was over almost before it started. Um, and Jordan Mason really d- did a lot of the work there. So Tyreek Hill is also going to be in the A tier this week. He is playing the Patriots. That's why. We're going to stick with him in the A tier with a Tyler Huntley type of uh, quarterback playing. I, I, I don't know. At the end of the day, let's just bet on Tyreek Hill. Having, having a good game, you still have to start him every single week. Now you're going to have some guys in this next year here that are elevated because they have really good matchups this week. Let's start with DK. DK's matchup's not great, but DK's been pretty consistently productive this season. And so... Um, we, even with what we saw on Monday night, we're going to put him here. Uh, Jaden Reed, we're going to have here as well. And Jaden Reed's one of those guys we are moving up because of matchup. The, the Vegas line for this one against the Los Angeles Rams is set at 48 and a half points. But the Los Angeles Rams have given up the fifth most points to wide receivers this year. You've got Jordan Love still getting healthy. You've got Jaden Reed coming off again, another game where he dominated with Jordan Love. So because of the matchup, uh, because of the Vegas line, we are going to move Jaden Reed up in our rankings as a must start this week in your fantasy football leagues. And Amari Cooper's right behind him in that aspect. There, he's playing the Washington Commanders who have given up uh, the highest amount of points to fantasy football wide receivers this year. And so Amari's going to be moved up and he's a must start in our opinion as well. You've got both of the Tampa Bay guys playing the Falcons this week. Uh, not a bad matchup for them, not a great matchup matchup for them. It's kind of, you know, either or, but with these guys, like you saw last week, it wasn't Godwin last week. It was Evans. It's going to be one of those guys every week. And sometimes it's both of them. Sometimes it's heavy one and some of the other. That's what you saw last week. And it was heavy Mike Evans, but them in this tier with Garrett Wilson, uh, Garrett Wilson has a good matchup as well with the Vikings. The Vikings defense has been solid this year, but their rank against wide receivers in terms of fantasy production, they've given up the third most points to wide receivers. And so their run defense has been elite. Their passing defense in terms of their cornerbacks has not been great so far from a fantasy perspective. And so Garrett Wilson, you're essentially just betting by ranking him this high that he's going to get a touchdown next week. I'm going to bet he gets a touchdown. And that's been that's essentially what I'm saying here. But uh, we'll put Garrett Wilson in this tier with these other guys. Yeah, and at the top of the seats here, we're, uh, the, the entire seat tier here is really a bunch of guys that have the talent and the ability to be B tier, um, but they're going to be moved down a tier because the the matchups are a little more questionable, right? You got Chris Olave going up against KC. You got Devontae Adams, who just held the New York Jets offense to nine points. You've got uh, Drake London playing Tampa, who's on a roll right now. You got Stephon Diggs. We just talked about Nico Collins and how tough of a matchup it is against Buffalo. Stephon Diggs going up against Buffalo. He's been very productive three of the first four weeks of the season with CJ Stroud in a new situation. He's still going to be in our top 20, but that's a tough situation to deal with. Brandon Ayuk is the only guy that really has a, a, a friendly situation playing the Cardinals, but he just straight up hasn't produced. Yeah. Now, again, he's going to be in this range because it's a very friendly matchup against the Cardinals. Uh, we just got to see him actually produce before we move him up. It's here where we think he should belong the rest of the season. Uh, that, that's what we were hoping for, at least going into the season. Uh, jumping down here to the D's tier, we're going to start with Deontay, who has a Vegas line this week uh, with the Chicago Bears. The total points for that game is set at 42. It's not expected to be a very good game, obviously. I think you could have guessed that. The Bears have actually been decent this year. Their secondary has not been bad. Uh, for fantasy perspective, but that with that being said, they've played some competition where you wouldn't really expect the fantasy wide receivers to put up a lot of points, so you mm-hmm. take that with a grain of salt, and you're starting Deontay because of the target volume every single week. Uh, George Pickens is going to be here playing the Cowboys. It's a decent matchup for him, mostly just a neutral for him. He's projected in the wide receiver two range. T. Higgins as well. T. Higgins actually has a pretty good matchup. The, the Ravens have given up the eighth most points to wide receivers in fantasy football this year, so we'll move T. Higgins up. Also, T. continues to kind of get healthier and get his legs under him, and so we'll continue to kind of I'm see. glad he has legs. Yeah, I am glad he has legs as well, yeah. and then we're going to have the two Jags guys here as well. Both of these guys have been productive, right? You saw Christian Kirk get the most targets, but you've seen Brian Thomas be really productive. And so I think both of these guys can be productive in that offense, although it does look like a very disappointing offense, an offense that's been a lot worse than we thought it would. They're both guys you want to start in fantasy football, in my opinion. I think both these guys are flexing this week pretty easily. Playing the Colts, mm-hmm. they should tear the Colts up. This play, plain and simple, the Vegas line is set at 47. The Colts have given up the ninth most points to wide receivers this year. They should tear them up. And then Terry, I think Terry's startable every week now with the, as good as Jaden Daniels looks. Jaden Daniels looks amazing. And, um, yeah, playing the Browns this week, it's not a great matchup, but I still think you start him. I think you have to respect the fact that he's just startable at this point. So we're going to put Terry here at 26. Yeah, and then the F tier, um, I do want to highlight Michael Pittman specifically. He finally had a productive game, 17 points. Actually, about half that production came when Anthony Richardson was on the field, so I don't think it was all fluky because Flacco was playing, though there is a significant benefit, I will admit, to Joe Flacco you know, throwing the ball to the receivers and actually accurately 
getting the ball to them. That, that, that is really nice. But that said, we are going to move up Michael Pittman just a little bit in our rankings. Um, it might bite us in the, in the butt, but they do have just a really friendly matchup against Jacksonville this week. Uh, keep in mind, the Colts have not won in Jacksonville in a decade. Um, that's disgusting and horrible, but that doesn't mean they're going to be exempt from production. I think Michael Pittman's going to have a decent game. Uh, Addison has a tough matchup against the Jets, though from a production perspective, they've actually allowed a decent amount of wide receiver production this year um, to date. Zay Flowers is just going to continue to fall down our rankings as it looks like Baltimore has figured out the formula to win games, and it is uh, ironically pretty close to what Greg Roman implemented in that offense before they let him go. And that's just running the frick out of the ball. And they do have Derrick Henry, which helps a little bit. So um, Zay Flowers is, is a great weapon, great piece for that offense, seeming to be a little less nice for fantasy football consistently, which is a bummer. Yeah. And we move Xavier Worthy up in that tier as well, because Xavier Worthy, obviously not having Rasheed Rice, we are going to be conservative yeah. with him, the own rank him in the wide receiver three range. So Let's talk about the G tier. And uh, Jerry Judy's going to be at the top of this tier. He has a decent matchup against the Commanders, again, who have allowed the most points to fantasy wide receivers this year. Jerry Judy's been fairly consistent. I mean, he has outscored Amari Cooper in a couple games now, but I think he still had 10 points in the last game. Going to double check myself. Um, he had 13 points last game, actually. 12 points, 11 points. I, he, he's been he's been pretty good. And that's in a full point PPR league, by the way. So um, with Judy, I feel like he's somebody that you are considering flexing every week. Cortland Sutton, we've moved up as well. We're going to continue to follow the targets. Um, he did have every single one of Bo Nix's passing yards last week. But um, I, I think that situation is going to be better. It has a, it's a better matchup against the Raiders. Waddle against the Pats. Waddle hasn't really been productive. He's going to be in this range until, you know, Tua gets back or something changes. Rashid Shahid got more targets last week, but he does play a Kansas City Chiefs defense that's pretty tough. Uh, so we'll continue. He'll be a borderline flex for us. Uh, Keenan Allen, kind of the same thing. With Keenan, he's still getting healthier. He wasn't back into like his full snap share yet last week. We'll see what he does this week. I'm kind of interested to see. Good matchup against the Panthers, though. Tank Dell. I don't really feel great about starting Tank Dell, but they are playing the Buffalo Bills, um, it, which is a matchup that is projected to be high scoring, but the Bills are really good against wide receivers. Maybe they lock down Nico and they try to lock down Diggs and Tank Dell gets the benefit of the doubt. I, I mean, I, I don't know. That's what we've been hoping That's for. That's what we've been hoping for, though, and it hasn't really happened. <laughs> uh, and then two guys to finish here, Juwan Jennings. We'll continue to rank him here. You do have Debo back now. You have Kittle back, and so it's like, you know, he is the fourth option there again. But he proved that even when he is the fourth option, he can still be productive there, right? You saw it last game. And so um, a little bit more friendly matchup this week as well with the mm -hmm. Cardinals. And then Xavier Leggett, we're going to continue to move up because Leggett had more than 10 targets last game. And so yeah. um, playing the Bears this week, the Bears have been, again, surprisingly good against fantasy wide receivers. But Leggett is somebody I feel like you're thinking about flexing after you picked him up on waivers this week. Yeah, and the H tier is a bunch of guys that you're probably going to have to flex this week because of buys. Um, the, the first guy is Jacoby Myers. And, you know, honestly, I'm, Pretty okay with that because he commands a decent amount of volume in that offense. Uh, Gardner Minshew is able to provide that even with Bowers and Devontae Adams being productive as well. I think Jacoby Myers is a viable flex option this week. Then you've got uh, Romeo Dobbs and Dontavion Wicks going back to back in this tier as well. I think it's anyone's guess who's going to be the productive guy this week. Uh, in week four, it was Wicks. In week five, who knows? We know it's Reed, and then it's going to be one of Wicks and Dobbs because Christian Watson, uh, we're expecting, is going to be out this week after um, being declared out in week four as well. Who, who would have thought that he'd get injured? Um, Alan Lazard finds himself in this tier. It's kind of so freaking annoying that Aaron Rodgers just won't move on and throw the ball to you know the objectively better receivers in that offense. But Alan Lazard continues to get his own because he just has a special connection with Rodgers. And it's, it's showing from a fantasy perspective as well. So if you need to flex him this week, you honestly have a decent chance of getting like 10 points. All right, the position you've all been waiting for, the best position in fantasy football this year. Let's go to tight end rankings. Right yes. Now. I'll, we'll just, I'll, I'll cover half of this. You cover the other half. <laughs> yeah. uh, and we, next week, you can have the first half since you have something to talk about. Ew. So, yeah, S tier, Kelsey, Kittle, Bowers, McBride. You're starting them every week. You feel decent about your tight end? Yeah. And that's really, that's really the qualification here. Uh, in the A tier, Ferguson, Ingram, and Kincaid. Ingram has a pretty good matchup against the Colts this week. Ferguson, um, he's still been at least somewhat steady despite most of the tight end sucking in Kincaid. Kind of the same thing. Uh, the Texans haven't given up, given up a ton of points to tight ends this year, but they still continue to feature Kincaid at least a little bit. All of these guys have questions to some extent. Like that's, Kincaid's that's only had one game over double digits. Yeah, right. And, 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 he, and But again, and you're that, still confidently yeah. taking him over almost every single guy beyond him. Yes. So uh, I'll, I'll cover the B tier and I'll let you get the rest here. We have yeah. Cole Komet and Frymuth in the B tier by themselves here because both of these guys were guys that you were drafting them basically like if you were punting tight end. Komet like wasn't on the field to begin the year. 
because of Gerald Everett. Komet is the tight end four now. And it's because he had a 25 point game, but his snap share, it was 50% in week one. And then the last two weeks have been 81 and 90%. So he's at least won that job and he's on the field. And he's an easy target for a rookie quarterback. And then Pat Fryermuth as well. Uh, I feel like he's been a pretty popular waiver guy and he should be. He's been getting 81 to 75 to 80% of the snaps. Uh, his targets have gone from four, four, five, and seven. So they're consistently going up. He's been a little bit more involved. He actually had a touchdown last game. So he had 16 points. Fryermuth, you feel as good, if not better, about than almost. <laughs> Any of the guys below him. So, man, it's ugly. I'll let you talk about the last couple of days. Domain, guys, where is Kyle Pitts? Where is Kyle Pitts, you freaking idiots? Why is he not on this list? Yes, he's on this Nobody's list. He's in that. the C tier, um, and he's not doing anything. Three, four, three targets, and he laid a goose egg, a literal goose egg, a zero-point goose egg in week four, and it's not looking any better honestly, for him. So he's going to be in this C tier until he produces. Taysom Hill continues to move up our rankings. Yes, we know about the injury. This is obviously assuming that he plays. If he doesn't play, you just move the guys behind him up a spot. But, I mean, Taysom Hill any given week has clearly two touchdown upside. He always has since being with the Saints. So um, Zach Ertz and Njoku are going to be on this list as well. Hopefully Njoku comes back healthy. I know he was a questionable in week four. They ended up calling him out um, towards the end of the week. I think he'll be good to go in week five. I'm hoping he will be because I'm interested to see what he does in that offense. Um, and then in, in the final tier, the D tier, we're only going to go through like 17, 18 guys here. Um, Conklin, who, you know, is getting some volume from Rogers. Parkinson, who is a solid like five to seven points every single week. And then Dalton Schultz, a uh, tougher matchup with the Bills but maybe he could get some targets while they're locking down on Diggs and Nico. And then Isaiah likely at the end. Um, no, Mark Andrews is not on this list because Mark Andrews is droppable. And I think a lot of you guys realize that now. Uh, we're starting to realize that. It's tragic. It sucks. It's really, really frustrating. Um, don't know what happened with Andrews, but I mean, likely is barely on this list. He, he's dang near droppable as well. I don't know what you're talking about. Almost droppable. Mark Andrews had zero points in each of the last two games. He's droppable. He's droppable. That's what he, I said. He, you he's, are, he's, he's droppable. There's no question about that. That's that's what I said. He's I, droppable. I know. He's droppable. <laughs> uh, let's go to quarterbacks now. And let's start with the S tier here. Again, the guys are rushing upside. You got Josh Allen, yeah. who it's like an every other week thing for Josh Allen, apparently. So this week, we'll have him really high. Next week, maybe we move him down because it's the week after. But he's got the Texans <laughs> right. this week. Right. Texans have given up a lot of points to quarterbacks this year, so you like that. The Vegas line's pretty high for that game. Should be a high-scoring game. Lamar. Uh, has continued to be pretty good. Uh, Jaden Daniels is the QB1 on the season. And then Kyler Murray, he was disappointing last week. A uh, little bit of a tougher matchup against the 49ers, but again, they're rushing upside guys. These are the guys you want to start every week, so we're going to put them in our lineups. So at the top of the A tier here, I'm actually going to include, include the B tier in here as well because they're both really small tiers. Jordan Love and CJ Stroud are going to be alone in the A tier. I think they're, again, a tier above everyone else below them. I like their matchups a little bit. I like CJ Stroud's consistency. I like Jordan Love going up against the LA Rams who are just depleted at this point. He's got three green lights. Um, even after coming off of an MCL starting really slow, he was very productive in the second half of the Minnesota game, and that was a tough matchup overall. You're going to have a nicer matchup against the Rams. B tier, you got Burrow, Purdy, and Mahomes. Mahomes continues to fall down our rankings um, because he's not producing like we expected him to. He's been very disappointing, very mediocre. Uh, still Patrick Mahomes from an NFL perspective, you want no one else. But in fantasy, there are plenty of QBs that I would prefer over him at the moment. Anthony Richardson also going to be in this tier. Didn't really know what to do with him this week because of the injury. Obviously, if he doesn't play Flacco, you're going to start Flacco um, like probably multiple tiers below him just because he doesn't have rushing upside. But uh, with AR he still has a rushing upside, right? And he honestly was on track to have a pretty successful game against Pittsburgh, which we did not expect until he went down with that hit pointer. So um, they're, they're saying that he's going to be fine. We're, we're expecting him to be fine, I think, in week five. In the seats here, here the guys are the best matchup. Trevor Lawrence is a good matchup against the Colts this week. We're still going to be conservative with Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Uh, Dak Prescott has a tough matchup, so he slid quite a bit against the Steelers. Steelers have given up not a ton of points to quarterbacks this year in fantasy. Sam Darnold plays the Jets, so that might be a little tougher, although Sam Darnold seems unstoppable right now. The rest of the guys are pretty much neutral. And then on KOC the screen... is unstoppable. Yeah. And then on the screen, you can see our full quarterback rankings here, the last two tiers as well. Again, you're only really starting these guys if you're in super flex leagues, which most, most of you are not. So there you go. Our ultimate rankings for the week. Do us a huge favor. Drop a like on the video. Make sure you're subscribed if you hasn't, haven't subscribed already. Blockfantasy.com slash domain to get the free rankings in a trade calculator. Use code domain. You get them for free. And you can also get a team blueprint when you sign up for an annual membership. So appreciate you guys. We'll see you later.